Hey, what's up, guys? This is Cobb, and welcome to some Control Necron action. You've been progressing the Necron campaign, and you're looking for a deck that isn't too expensive to start a run in, then this list right here is going to be awesome for you in Constructed Ranked. We're just going to go through all of the cards here, talk about some options that you've got in the deck, and how you can adapt it as things go on. But some of the baseline cards will include synoptic scarab the scarabs in this deck are going to be your early game saving grace getting as much value out of these guys as possible and positioning them cleverly is going to be your ticket to securing early game wins and making sure things like orc and chaos don't get completely out of control against you in the early game those guys are extremely terrifying if they get early board momentum so your scarabs are going to be your go-to um you're going to have a lot of early game stratagems a lot of one cost stratagems in the deck to help you activate your um, artifice effects on both your scarabs and things like psychomancer uh, and technomancer and things like that so extermination protocol and reanimation protocol find their way into the deck as well as a reconstitution protocol this is just a good emergency card to have if you lose uh, things like your psychomancer or you lose all of your scarabs early on and you just have to reload um, it's it's nice to have this as a one-off having two of these Ah, they can end up dead in the hands sometimes, so you want to avoid that, but besides that, I think it's really good. Spider Nest. This is a common card. I actually have one copy of this card in this deck. Um, not by choice. I just don't have two copies of the Son of a Gun yet, okay? Uh, but Spider Nest, obviously fantastic. This is another way to generate Scarabs. You're also going to be looking to mulligan into this in the early game where possible. Now... Conversely, I did look out big time and get myself two copies of Technomancer. I'd highly, highly advise spending some of your epic wild cards on crafting one of these as soon as possible. Um, the sooner you can get your hands on at least one copy of Technomancer, the better time you're going to have in general with uh, Necron in ranked play. Just a fantastic, fantastic card to have. One of is great. Two of is even better. I looked out and got two of. Um, next up, we have the Triac Praetorian. It's just a good early game sort of vanilla three drop to stop those aggro decks when things don't go quite to plan. It's just a good early game option to have. Crypto Thrall, not really the best taunt card, but the more Vanguard you have with Remnant, the better uh, with Necron. Just feels like a good option for stopping early aggression. It's also a decent drop in the late game as well. Um, just to kind of fill out your curve a little bit too. Next up we have Psychomancer. This is a rare quality card. Just another artifice effect. It's nice and cheap for its stat line as well. It's good stuff once again for stopping things like Chaos. I can't tell you how many times, well actually it's been a few times. I haven't been playing this deck that long, but a few times now I've been playing this deck against things like Chaos. Um, and some dude has been buffing the crap out of a couple of units. You know, Tyranid is notorious for this as well. And having this guy able to just repeatedly stun his guys over and over and over <laughs> is actually really really useful it buys you a lot of time until you pull up your board clears right um speaking of which oh no we're not, we're not quite there yet uh implacable conqueror this card is sort of key to the deck if you don't have this then you can't go quite as expensive with your late game options you can still run the deck it still works great it still works fine uh but implacable conqueror is again another one of those high priority cards that you want to be getting your hands on as soon as possible by any means necessary if you're looking to play a control style necron lowering the cost of all troops in your deck by two this is going to allow you to run the most expensive and powerful um late game necron cards because once the scarabs get you out of early game you eventually want to transition into the chunky boys, you know, that can uh, really throw down with even the biggest tyrannids, right? Lich Guard. I don't know why I only have one Lich Guard in this deck list. I actually have two copies of this. Um, the only campaign that I paid for is the Necron campaign, by the way, which is why I have more Necron cards than maybe other free-to-play players have. But there it is. Maybe I should run an extra copy of this. Right now, I have a one of. Uh, Scythe Assault, great area of effect. I looked out and got this from a booster pack. Fantastic stuff. This is another key card right here. Oh, by the way, if you don't have Scythe Assault, again, it's not the biggest deal. These are cards that you can build towards in the future to sort of fatten out the deck um, in the meanwhile. Self-Destruction is awesome with this deck list. You want to be using this around 10, 7, 10, 8, 10, 9. Once you're transitioning away from flooding the board with Scarabs, you pop self-destruction, hopefully slam into the unit or reanimate another unit on the board or something, and boom, you've entered late game mode, and then it's all about dropping your big guys, right? But self-destruction really marks the exact middle of the game most of the time with this deck. It helps clear the enemy board, spends all of your scarabs, gets one big last burst of value out of those guys. Um, so yeah, having two copies of this is going to be 
kind of key. Uh, Conquering Tyrant, I like to run this as a one-of, just because I feel like you can never underestimate healing. It's also a stratagem, so more stratagem uh, synergy here. And then for my late game units, I've kind of just picked up every late game unit I have at this point. Hexmack Destroy is great. Uh, Plasmance is also great. Royal Warden is pretty damn nice. I like it for its rally effect. It's some instant onboard impact. Um, I run a couple of copies of Ghost Arc as well, uh, just because if you can reduce the cost of this down to a five cost, it suddenly becomes an absolute incredibly high value card. Um, Methodical Destruction, I run two of these because why would you not? It's hard removal. It's fantastic against like half the decks that exist in the game. Um, it's going to help you out a lot against big chunky flying units in particular that uh, Necron otherwise kind of struggle to bring down. Uh, at least with this deck list and a lot of scarabs on the ball, they don't do anything to flying units. So Methodical Destruction is a must and two copies, of course. And then for our ultra late game boys, we have the Scorpec Lord and the incredible, amazing Monolith. Again, if you don't have this, not the biggest deal. You can go ahead and run a couple of... What the hell are they called? Deathstalkers? Doomstalkers, man. These Doomstalkers are just great. If you can slam these on the board at uh, a six mana cost, you know, because you've um, you've used Impeccable Conqueror and got the discount for those guys, it's six energy cost for these, for these Doomstalkers. They're also fantastic. I just happen to have the Scorpic Lord and the Monolith, and I prefer to run these instead. So, yeah, that would be the deck list. I should also point out as well that even though I am using Orakan the Diviner as our Warlord in this deck, he only really becomes essential once you are running Implacable Conqueror. Um, if you don't have Implacable Conqueror, you really don't need Orakan to play this deck. You can just play it with any other Necron Warlord, and it's fine. It's just more of a budget version of the deck, and you can, again, start to build up towards this um, as time goes by and as you unlock more cards and stuff like that. But once you get Orakan the Diviner, suddenly Implacable Conqueror becomes incredible, because with Orakan you have the chance of uh, spending one energy every turn to scry your way into this card and find this card faster when you need it, right? And if you can play it on curve, it's incredible. So, yeah, works much, much better with Orokan, can be played with anything if you don't have Implacable Conqueror. And to be honest, that is pretty much it. That's pretty much the decklist, man. So, yeah, enjoy the games to come. Enjoy the monolith action in particular. And I'll catch up with you guys in just a sec. Okay, it's Eldar time, boys. Uh, Self-destruction, probably don't want to hold on to super early on. We can replace this, replace this. Lich Guide, I think, is fine to keep. Uh, that's a bit of a 50-50, but let's just mulligan three, see what we get. Okay, we've drawn to another self-destruction. Okay, man. This really is not an uh, ideal opening hand, but that is the power of playing as Orakan. We have extra chances in the first couple rounds to just kind of scry our way into uh, our Scarab cards, which is so, so important. Phase one of this deck is always just finding your Scarabs. There's one. Lovely. All right. Trid. That'll do. Okay, cool. So we pick up Scarab next round. We want him to have a slow turn here if we can. Deploy Storm Guardian. That'll do. That's quite a slow turn. Okay. These things do have Shurukens, so the Scarab's going to trade quite badly into this. But... Okay, he trades in with his turret. Yeah, so the Scarab's definitely coming out. Scry, see what we get. Um, I'm actually gonna pick up Methodical Destruction here. We already have a 4-drop for the next turn, so we don't need the Praetorian, and I don't want to draw into my big guys until I'm discounting them. So we do that. We attack here. And then we ping. Ping the egg, just to duplicate the Scarab's more than anything. No egg survives. Gives this Necron. Ouch. Straight into an Eldritch Storm. Okay. This guy's played against Skyros before, man. He knows to be afraid. That's fine. Part of what makes the Scarabs good, I think, is your, uh, you're just forcing resources from your opponent early on. Things like that. Inefficient turns like that. Turns where they're just spending all of their energy. Sometimes with leftover energy. 
just keep the scarabs off the board. They're a real pain if they get completely out of control, so. Okay, we have to kill this thing. Oh wow, we pick up a monolith. That's really, really, really not ideal. Yeah, we don't have a choice but to trade here. We do not have a choice. Yeah, we just slammed the Lich Guard. It's a really bad card against Eldar, specifically. Just because they have so much flying damage and it has no flying defense at all. But hey, it's a body. Okay. Wow, gives the stealth too. That's scary. Alright, we do come up with the Royal Warden, which is huge. We're killing this thing off maybe next turn. Hmm. But I gotta wonder, is it even worth playing right now? Given that we can't get the rally attack here. Jeez. Okay. Nah, I'm just gonna revive the Scarab Men. Do I even play it right now? Yeah, I do. Ooh, there's Implacable Conqueror. We'll have that next turn. Uh, and I think we do attack in here. Okay, so we're threatening Scarabs again. We'll actually have a little bit of a Scarab Flood, potentially, next turn. With a big self-destruction turn, if we have to. I like to play this more in, like, turn 8 or turn 9. Uh, where you can play this plus another minion to follow up. So you're not just left with an empty board. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, this could be a Scarab Explosion 10. This could for sure be a Scarab Explosion 10 next turn. Because this thing's actually going to stick. Which is always ideal. Might just be too good. Hmm. No, it's actually not a Scarab Explosion turn, is it? Not yet. I think I'm happy to play this slow. I think I'm pretty happy to play this slow. Scry, man. More scarabs. Let's do it. Do we make, even make this trade? Probably. Okay. So this is a little bit of a gamble. If he's already drawn his second AoE... Okay, he doesn't have it by the looks. Yeah, if he already had a second AoE in hand, then this would be a terrible play, but he's already played one. He's only 10 cards deep into his deck. So it's pretty unlikely that he's drawn both of them already. Trade goes in here. And we are looking at a bit of a Scarab detonation at this point. Yeah, I think that that's it. Okay, we trade here, we trade here. This guy kills off the egg. We then scry, I guess into a super, super cheap taunt next turn. Then we explode all of these guys. Oh my god. Thought I might actually kill him there for a second. That's a good kill. That's a good kill. To the face. And that's a good kill. Alright, man. Basically, best possible hits there.
kind of hoping he just slams a big giant dude here. Okay. He's actually just dead. Straight out of hand, man. We didn't even have to start cashing in on our super, super cheap guys, but you can see how we transitioned in from the Scarabs into just playing lots and lots of cheap dudes. Um, but yeah, he's gone, man. He gone. Cool. Okay. Pretty horrific opening hand. Might hold on to the Triac Praetorian just so we have something to play. Everything else, let's scrap it. Nice, we actually roll into the spider nest. Which, when going second, is pretty damn good. We're against someone uh, here who actually counters. The early scarabs, quite comfortably. Mr. Harkin. So let's see how this goes, man. Cypher comes down. Okay, we just fucking just clap this guy. Um, we could even threaten early scarabs here and force him to hero power next turn. The reason it's good to get some early scarabs on the board if you can, if you already have reload in hand, is because if we can force him on turn 3 to use his uh, Hellspear Assault, in this case, his hero power, and to float one energy, to waste one energy, that's actually like a huge win. Because it just gives us tempo going into uh, turn 3. So I think this is totally fine. Probably a little bit too early for self-destruction. I'll just go into extermination protocol. We're against chaos here. Um, you got to be able to kill their minions quickly. Or well, things get uh, things get out of hand very, very fast against chaos. So let's see. Nice. He uses hero power. So if he doesn't have a one cost now, then he's suddenly in so much trouble going into next round. Okay, he does, but it's a weak one cost. That's actually fine as well. That's fine, man. All of the tempo goes to us here, you know? And just like this, he is in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble, man. And to be honest, openers like this are actually really quite common. Like, even if we went second here, and we just had to play the Praetorian this turn, yeah, then, even still, on turn 4, we'd get to play uh, the, um, what's it called? Spider Nest along with Extermination Protocol, for the same effect, just one turn later, you know. So it's, I don't know, openers like this and little combos like this in the early game, pretty reliable, to be honest. Pretty reliable. Nice. And that's what you want to see. Your opponent drawing cards on turn four. These troop drawn, create a copy of Abaddon's Chosen in your hand. Okay. So now, oh wow, we actually drew the next Scarab as well. Now it's just a matter of keeping these scarabs on the board. We do that by making sure that we never overcap. We actually draw straight into Implacable Conqueror. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic uh, fantastic find. And I'm going to make sure to play my taunt on the far left side here. So that when he uses his cleave attack, uh, his blast, it will only kill one scarab uh, if he wants to do that. So it's just pretty rough for him overall. Um, I think I'm happy to trade in one or two here. Just to play around AoE a little bit, I think maintaining five Scarabs is just fine. We could have even traded in another one, to be honest, just in case, but... We, do, we need to keep just enough on the board that it's almost impossible for him to remove, unless he has board-wide removal, uh, is the idea. Okay, the son of a gun is stealth. Now the Dark Pacts begin. Health and regen. Okay. There it is, man. Implacable Conqueror already off the top. That's massive. So we trade in some nerds here. We just drop Implacable Conqueror, I suppose. Right on time. We maintain our taunt, keep him alive. We have a huge lack of uh, damage to flying enemies here. So I am aware of that. We'll be trying to draw into our bigger guys pretty soon. We're all now two energy cheaper. Also, Scarab self-destruct. Um, 
is obviously extremely valuable as well if we can pull that too. So there's two copies of that and a whole lot of big uh, units waiting to be drawn now. We just need to keep the Scarabs on the board for one or two more turns. Give us some time to uh, scry. Scrying all our way into those. Okay. Nice. And so placing our taunt here at the far left is actually going to get some value. Because he only blast attacks onto one guy. Oh no, he, never mind. He cleaves with the flying unit. I'm talking nonsense. Okay, so we pick up Ghost Dark. Not the most valuable. Okay. So we trade and we ping. That's definitely happening. Then it's trade, trade. So I do actually run out this other Scarab right now. And then let's scry. We're just looking for big guys here. Psychomancer buys us some time. Methodical Destruction's also not bad. Sort of not bad to pull into. This is a two cost uh, Psychomancer. Yeah, I think it's actually fine. Okay. We trade in here. We make the attack here. If my unit wants to do that. Then we make the attack here. And then we two damage here. Okay. And we reload. Alright, man. We maintain control. Five cost comes down, which means he's going to hero power. He'll spear assault once again. He's going to just be desperately trying to kill off as many scarabs as he can here every round. Uh, which is a huge advantage with the scarabs. It's like, it's a one cost. And it's forcing your opponent to use so much energy every turn. You kind of just bleed their hand dry of uh, value as the game goes on. So the Psychomancer here has got to go down. Uh, the ability to stun enemy troops like this is just going to be great for us. I guess we drop this first. See what we stun. Self-destruction is an incredible, incredible pickup. That'll be coming out next turn, almost guaranteed. Nice, we even get the stun just where we need it, bro. That's so good. That's such a good stun. Here we get the kill right here. And I guess we just let Scarabs stick now. Yeah. Alright, mate. Oof. Eight cost comes down. It means that he can't afford to use his cleave. When you deploy a troop, give it a random dark pack. So that thing has to die this turn. No matter what. Hmm. Hmm. I think trading in here first actually makes most sense. Like this. And like this. Then scry. Nice. We get to keep the monolith next turn. We even stun his big guy, which is massive. And then we just blast this. We need three hits here to kill this. It's actually going to happen. Dude, the RNG gods are just on our side. Look at this. We can even hit him in the face now because we're so far ahead. And now we get to drop a monolith next turn with one uh, mana to spare. Okay, his 8 drop comes. Does he make this trade though? If he makes this trade, he might be dead? I don't need him to be 8 health for him to die to the monolith. And this might just be the perfect demonstration game of how this deck is working for us. Yep, he gives it plus health. Monolith becomes available. He needs a destroy a minion mechanic. To take this thing out. If it lives, it gains access to Particle Whip, which is just 8 damage to the face and then 3 to adjacent units. So, extremely powerful stratagem. If the Monolith lives, it's like the ultimate Necron win condition. If this thing sticks, you start to get board control real quick. Needless to say. 
He's going to cleave attack. That's a pretty good sign that he doesn't have it. He doesn't have any way to remove this. Oh, yo, 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 yo! I eat my words, dude. Okay, the game goes on. All right, man. Luckily, I've already got a game showing particle whip in action. So I'll have to include uh, the particle whip scene, I guess, in the video so far. Okay, this guy's a bit of a problem then. Smart plays from that guy though, by the way. Very smartly done. This thing would die to a trade, so it's not the greatest. Okay. Let's scry it up. Picking up some hard removal, this seems like a pretty good idea. And then for now, we just drop ghost ship and taunt. We still have incredible late game options even outside of the monolith, so it's not too bad. I'll give it to this guy though, man. He's putting on a show here, dude. This is a damn cool game. That said, with our hard removal coming up next turn... Ooh, another vanguard. That might actually keep him alive. It depends how our RNG goes with the methodical destruction here. If you do three damage to this thing... Uh, to the adjacent unit, then he's dead. I think he's dead anyway, actually. Because he didn't make the trades, though. Yeah, we don't even have to rely on that. What am I talking about? Alright, man. We still get him. Good game, man. Good game. Very good game, actually. Showed basically everything that the deck can do in one game. Against a pretty funky opponent. But hey, before we wrap up, let me go ahead and cut to the uh, to the monolith action from a game that I played a little bit earlier. Oh my god, bro. I mean, there's no real question here. The monolith does come down. Because it's just so utterly insane. I think I just let, it, let this board sit. Minus like a trade in here. Yeah, so Monolith's talent is just a win condition on its own. Deal 8 damage to an enemy and 3 to its adjacent units. Um. Yeah. This thing's got 3 armor too, man. Gonna have a hell of a time killing this thing. To be honest, it might even be the case that a lot of the Necron... Uh, the 8 drops? It's like the Deathwalker or Deathstalker, I think. Vehicle. Extremely, extremely efficient as well. I mean, you can get it down for two energy cheaper. And it's basically a win condition as well if your opponent can't remove it, so... Oh my god. We get to death beam this guy for the kill, are you kidding me? Do it before he concedes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's the first time I've ever had the chance to actually use this card, man, so... That felt pretty good, man. That felt pretty good. Alrighty. I think that's about going to do it for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this deck list. Again, it's not fully optimized. Um, it's also not completely budget. It's kind of middle ground. If you paid for the Necron campaign, you can probably build most of this deck quite comfortably. If you're playing free-to-play with the Necron campaign, you can probably build like 85, 90% of this deck um, and still do pretty damn fine with it as well and build towards something like this in the future. So... That'll be it. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all of that good snot if you did enjoy this video. And I should catch all of y'all just a tad bit later.